Hey guys, what's up? It's Audrey Steeman, and today we're going to design some style frames. But this time, we're going to design with some 2D effects that I recently created, which you can check out in my store. So I hand drew these in Procreate, and then I vectorized them in Illustrator so you wouldn't have to. So feel free to go check those out in my store. Uh, I find them super useful, personally. I mean, I would hope so, because I made them. <laughs> these are some assets that I think kind of add a little bit of more of an action-packed kind of feel to your style frames or your designs. So I'm going to do a Valorant-themed style frame. Uh, picking one of the really cool agents and then using some of those 2d effects as well so let's get into photoshop so here we are in photoshop i decided to go with omen for this style frame he's one of my all-time favorite characters for sure okay so i threw in his concept art png here and usually what i do from here i just kind of throw in some random like texture assets and stuff i don't really have like a set plan so i'm just going to throw in some textures real quick just kind of threw in some random ones because I don't really know what I'm going to use yet. Probably won't use all of them, but but we'll see. And I'm also going to pull up my 2D effects that I made here. And so these are all the assets that I made. And I think for Omen, what makes the most sense to me to use is maybe some like dust and explosions and some like smoke maybe. One of the lines that he says all the time in, in game is shadow is traveling. And so I think smoke kind of is indicative of that. So I'll grab a couple of these for now. I'm just gonna copy and paste them into Photoshop as smart objects. And I'll throw a couple of the um, dust explosion ones in there as well, just to have. So obviously these aren't the colors that I'm gonna end up using. I'll change that here in a little bit. But I think right now I'm just gonna kind of adjust kind of the size of Omen see like how I want to position him in the in the composition because so I need to think also where I want to put his name. And I'll actually add kind of a dark layer for now because so I think ultimately I want to have the composition be kind of kind of on the darker side. Then I'm going to add his name. Maybe just have it like super big in the background. Got his name and I'll mess with the with the typeface and see which one kind of lands the best. Something a little more serious, a little more ominous. I think this one's kind of cool. But I'm gonna duplicate that as well and try another typeface just to see if I can find something a little bit better. Found this one too, but I think this first one, uh, which is Engarda, probably a little bit better. I'm gonna adjust a little bit of the the kerning here, the tracking, sorry. You type nerds out there. <laughs> so you have a basis for the typography. It's definitely not final. Um, but just for the sense of composition, you know. And I'll go ahead and scale up some of these textures just to kind of have um, an initial look started. Set that to something like lighter color for now. Same thing with these uh, dusty textures here. Don't want to overcrowd it too much with texture right off the bat because I uh, want to get everything in there that I want to use first. So I kind of like the idea of like his cape or his cloak kind of um, interacting with the, the type in the background a little bit and need to kind of problem solve in advance when it comes to like how legible the type is because so you want it to be at least somewhat readable or at least know like what the characters are behind them and maybe i can do one of those duplicating um kind of uh effects as well Let's see if that could be a cool thing maybe not <laughs> I'm kind of messing with like the orientation of the type too. Um, in my previous Valorant style frames, I've kind of had them either horizontal or vertical. Um, I haven't messed with having more of an angular approach, so I'm going to kind of see like what that could be, if anything. I think as long as we have uh, the name Omen somewhere, that's, <laughs> that's a little more legible, I think. Um, that should be fine. I just don't want too many ambiguous characters to where you can't necessarily tell what character is what. So, so yeah, I'm just gonna kind of like pattern these out and see um, see where I can go from there. And I like too how kind of the ends um, and like kind of the curvy pointed serifs um, of this typeface is kind of making some shapes in itself too, which kind of resemble like his, his shape language and his character. Um, and his like concept art and everything. So I think I can kind of play with that as well. And I'll just group these together so I can move it around however I need. Okay, cool. I think uh, I think this is a good start for the typography. I'm gonna name that typography. And now I'm gonna start kind of incorporating um, some of my 2D effects here and see what I can do with that. So I've got some smoke here, kind of resembles the smoke that's already around him in his concept art. Also just realized this is probably super tiny for you, so I'm gonna blow this up. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna kind of see like what I can do with uh, with some of these effects here. I'll probably have some kind of going behind him. I'm gonna have it kind of interweave with this typography, I think, too. I think that could be kind of cool. Is there like a good middle ground between like... <laughs> 
full screen and not super tiny. I'm so sorry about this. <laughs> okay, 130%. <laughs> That's the magic number. <laughs> okay, so we got some smoke coming from behind him. I'll probably just stick with these like individual trails of smoke too, just so it doesn't get overwhelming. I'm trying to think of where this one could come from. This one could also come from behind him, but then maybe like over his arm too. Get a little more of that interweaving effect. And see if I can do anything with this one. Maybe not. Might be too much. It's kind of cool, like full scale though. Mm. Most of me style framing is just constant indecision <laughs> and just uh, trying things out, seeing if they work or not, um, changing my mind again, and uh, so on and so forth. <laughs> See, I kind of like the idea of this, but at the same time, it gets a little too thick and masking this out to be able to see the letters behind might be a little, little too much of a problem that I don't want to deal with. So I'm going to probably stick with the, uh, the individual trails here. Maybe I stick this one behind Omen to where it can have um, some smoke kind of trailing off, off the top here. Kind of trying to see how I could use this. Yeah, I kind of like this um, this top portion here and I can mask out the rest of this, if that makes sense. So if I just lasso this for now, then I'll just mask that. So that is the nice thing about these 2D effects that I made and I wanted to make sure that even I could use them and I can manipulate it however I want to. Uh, you can cut these up, you can mask out whatever you need to, you can take pieces from the Illustrator file and use them however you need to. They don't all have to be together and visible at the same time. I think now I'm gonna start kind of masking out the smoke with the type and everything. So before I do anything, I usually add a mask to like all of these things before I make selections and stuff, just cause I know I will like take away uh, parts of that later. So I have him selected and then I'm gonna start masking out some of the smoke here. So I want the smoke to show up over his arm, but not over his body. So with a brush, hard hardness uh, selected, do relatively small and then put it to black. I'm gonna start masking this out here. I wanna make sure that it kinda like starts to overlap to go wrap around his body like that. So I'm gonna stick with that for now. I'll come back to it if I don't like it later. 130%. My goodness. And before I start masking stuff with the type, I want to make sure that it's like lined up the way that I want. I'm going to duplicate the typography folder because you always want to have the live version just in case. And I'm going to convert that to a smart object just so it's one thing and I can select it and everything. So starting over here on the left, I'm going to reveal this, this piece right here. This is kind of going from behind and then over. Probably take out this as well so it kind of like interweaves like that. And then with this top one here, I'll reveal that M a little bit more. And then over here on the right, I'm just kind of taking away some of these as well, probably. Just keep it like that. So in my mind, when it comes to steps like this, it's really just about balance and uh, kind of checking yourself and using your eyes just to see what's like kind of out of place um, in a good way or a bad way um, and what you can kind of do differently there and make versions. That's kind of the whole part of the process is just iterating and and just trying uh, other stuff out, trying different versions of things. So I don't know if this is gonna be too much, we'll find out, but I wanna see what having like an explosion, like the spike exploding or something behind him could be kind of like the whole uh, cool guys don't look at explosions, Lonely Island music video, you know what I'm talking about. And I think this could also interweave with the, with the type too a little bit, but again, it could be too much. We don't quite know yet could also see what this other graphic here looks like. Um, it's kind of, it kind of resembles fire, but it's mostly kind of like a brush of wind, kind of grounding him a little more to the, to the bottom of the composition. I kind of like this too. Actually gonna duplicate that and add it to the other side. Reflect it. Yeah, I think that's sweet. And I think this is a perfect element to interweave with, with type here and what we have going on. So it's perfect. And same thing here, I'm gonna add a mask, select my type, get my brush, set it to black, and then I will just start taking away some of this stuff. Because it is a little more thicker towards the bottom here, I won't be able to mask out as much, but it's more of these like little pieces that are coming off of the explosion that I'll, that I'll focus on. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Uh, now the next part, which is like 
One of my favorite parts is kind of adding color and uh, manipulating that. I'm going to add a gradient map. And I recently got these awesome, awesome gradient maps from, um, I think it's pronounced Margarita Vox. Um, she's a super talented designer. She has her own YouTube, um, TikTok, Instagram. Um, she has a lot of really cool stuff with gradient maps and um, different Photoshop effects. And so I snagged me some of these. Literally, you could pick any of these and call it a day. Uh, so I want to pick something that is more on the darker side. Something that um, if I need to kind of tailor the colors and like the color ratios, I can. Ooh, that's pretty cool. And just kind of keeping in mind his um, like his color palette too of like being more like purples and and like matte blacks and stuff like that. So something kind of similar to this, but with a little more color range, I think could be could be interesting. I don't want it to resemble too much to the Viper or Jet one that I did. I want it to be kind of different on its own. That's pretty cool. So maybe I mess with this one and see uh, if there's anything interesting I can get from this. And I want to keep in mind too, having some kind of like contrasting accent color as well. I don't want it to be too monochromatic. That's just a personal preference for me. This one is already starting to feel like the Viper one, which I don't want. Like some kind of like hyper like light blue, like a cyan color. So it's starting to feel like the jet one more now with like the reds and stuff. And I mean, if they're similar, they're similar, like whatever. But I do kind of like this warm palette that's kind of going on here, like the oranges and reds and stuff. Do you like the vibrancy of these colors as well? gonna add this too as a gradient just so I have it as well. I do like where this one is going so I'm gonna keep that for now and I'll probably alter probably this light purple to be something a little different. But yeah I'll keep I'll keep messing with it. And because the the 2D effects have their own colors right now and that's being affected by the, gr the gradient map, um, this orange I'm not uh, liking the like amount of saturation or at least like the the vibrancy of that I feel like it clashes a little too much right now so I'm going to add a add a color overlay to that to both of these and then this is where um, I can kind of color pick but because it's under the gradient map um, it'll adjust those values to whatever that gradient map is so I do kind of like this um, like darker purple and I actually I turned on uh, some of these textures too, just to see what that could look like. And I do like, it's like pretty subtle, but that graininess, that scan texture is kind of coming through. So it's like subtle enough, but if it's it's still there. And again, it just kind of keeps him grounded and it's all part of his color palette, all nice and dark and ominous and mysterious. And I do have this, uh, this really cool like paint texture um, that I pulled simply because it does resemble kind of like uh, I think it's like one of his ultimates or something or one of his abilities um, to kind of create like a shadowy orb kind of thing and I thought this kind of resembled that so kind of stick this in here and see if I can do something with it put it on a blending mode like soft light I had it on earlier just kind of cool you can see the texture like through the the typography and everything um, but I don't want it to affect the colors too much so I might either ditch it or just kind of adjust the uh, the opacity on it. But I think it's pretty cool. I love what it's doing texture wise down here. It's really nice. Now I do have this plastic texture over it right now, which it's kind of one of those default textures where it's like it, it'll make anything look cool, um, but it does kind of add uh, a matte effect with the lighter color blending mode that I have going on right now. And I don't know if I want that or not quite yet. Um, Cause there's a lot, a lot of really good contrast going on here without it. So that's a TBD also. Something else that I usually do towards the end, but I'm gonna do it now just because, what the heck, it's style framing, anything goes. It's like jazz, you know? I'm gonna add just a white fill layer, go to filter, noise, add noise, and kind of a considerable amount, nothing crazy though. Set it to uniform. Then I'm pretty sure it is with darker color. It's with one of these, I promise. Probably linear burn that seems like a lot though hold on one second i want to check my other style frame that i used with jet color burn that's what it was <laughs> i'm actually just gonna steal this because i'm too lazy i'm just gonna steal this and paste it over so yeah it was color burn just for a little bit of a uh, noise and grain but i'll probably pull that back a little bit because of how dark um the composition already is but you know me i love some grain Oh my god, I haven't saved my file yet. <laughs> it 
It's like the cardinal sin of Photoshop. Oh my god. Learn from my mistakes. Don't don't wait this long in to uh to save your document. Okay, it is saved. Maybe I'll adjust the smoke colors as well. That vibrant red, which is nice. I'm not saying that that's not nice right now, but I would like to see my other options. So by default, that's set that to what our like bottom explosion color is. Ooh, that's a kind of a cool color. I like the idea of it kind of being multicolored, similar to how I did um, Jet's like wind that's like swirling around her. You know what? I'm I'm not feeling the color of the of the type right now, so I'm gonna change that. I feel so bad for some people that are probably watching this for the first time or watching my channel for the first time and they're just so confused <laughs> by the process. Um, there's just no linearness really to it. It's just literally whatever I feel like doing in that moment. So I apologize for that. I'm gonna see Ooh, white could be kind of nice, like an off magenta or not magenta, uh, like a lilac -y white. I still want that texture to kind of come through though. So I'm gonna pay attention to that. Something that just contrasts enough, you know, especially to show off those highlights he has going on in his uh, concept art. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. So I actually added this plastic texture right under the gradient map here and shocking results. I love it. Um, you can kind of see like the plasticky texture almost looks as if it's part of the smoke. Isn't that fantastic? It's just so cool. Like there's just a lot of happy accidents that happen um, that happens with style framing and it's Partially the reason why I love it so much. I don't know. He's feeling kind of good right now. Um, I'm trying to think of like what else I would do here. Because it doesn't feel done. Like I feel like there's still more that I need to do. But I'm trying to think of what exactly. Uh, for a little bit of extra graininess. I'm going to do the Photoshop action from Hoodspo, Which is kind of a retro grain kind of effect. Um, and you can kind of see if you look closely. Can't really tell so much on the inside because of all the effects I have going on, but on the outer edges, it kind of roughens them up a little bit, which I like. And it's not super clean vector, um, just because nothing really about this composition is super clean in vector other than the 2D effects and the type. Um, but I'm going to change that. So yeah, I'm going to apply that um, action to, to those things as well. So I'm actually going to see if I can do some displacement mapping with the, with the type in the background. Um, because I really do love these like sharp and curved um, kind of indentations and like serifs of the font. I think that's really, really cool and it really interacts well with the smoke. But I want to see if I can kind of manipulate that a little more. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. I don't know yet. Do we like it or do we not? Something else I'm going to do here, I'm going to kind of mask out some of these edges where his highlights are on his cape, um, just because they are the same color as the type and I'd rather that kind of like bleed into the background rather than be separated like that. So I'm just going to use a black brush on his mask and just kind of mask those out. I'll just kind of cheat that a little bit. It is kind of the benefit of like knowing Photoshop really well, of like you can kind of know what tricks you need to just kind of fake something and just kind of tailor it to however you feel is best. This is usually the phase where I just stare intensely at it until I find something else that I need to do with it. I think I know what else I'd like to try as well. I'm gonna see if I can get any kind of like second bit of dimension with the smoke and adding some like white on that so it's not plain red. So I'm just gonna kind of paint some of this in to see if I can uh, do what I want here. Nope, never mind. Don't like it. I'd love to get some highlights in his arm over here, um, just so it's not r just red and purple. Love to get some white in there. Maybe you can just kind of fake paint some like shapes. I'll also take a hard eraser. Just kind of take away some of that as well, just so have some sharper edges. Stuff like this definitely helps if you happen to be an illustrator, um, or at least know your way around a using a paintbrush and stuff, and to kind of mimic. The effects that you want but aren't there currently. So this is kind of my way of faking it till I make it, you know. <laughs> I think that looks good. It's fine. I'm gonna really be uh, torturing myself later figuring out what is missing from this. It might not be anything, but I feel like I did this one too quickly. <laughs> I also kind of like the idea of like with these colors especially, um, kind of being in one of those black light like putt-putt courses or like laser tag or something. Um, and kind of having some like paint in the background be like black lit and super bright and contrasted. 
Um, so I'm kind of messing with like adding in some like paint textures and stuff with some brushes that I have. All right, I think he's pretty much done. Um, I tried some stuff out, a lot of stuff I didn't like, <laughs> so I didn't really include everything here in the end. I think for the creme de la creme of final touches, I'm going to add in the the Valorant logo and just see where that can kind of go in the composition as well. I'm going to stick this under the gradient map so it's kind of part of the color scheme here. Color overlay applied to that. Another idea I had, I could make this smaller and then kind of insert it in the little windows that we have going on with the typography maybe. That could be a cool placement, a little more visible. All right, and I think he's done. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this and if I should do any more Valorant characters. Uh, these are always super fun and kind of giving them their own like design silhouette in a way. But anyway, that's all I got for you. <laughs> so thank you guys again for watching. I hope this was cool to watch, um, to see process and everything. Be sure to check out the 2D effects for design uh, asset pack in my store or on Created Market or Gumroad. Feel free to tag me on Instagram or Twitter if you guys make anything with them. As always, thanks for the support and I'll see you in the next video.